Meantime, in the face of saber rattling from China, a bipartisan group of House members met with the newly inaugurated president of Taiwan today, led by Foreign Affairs Committee Chair Mike McCall. The Congress members were actively bucking a warning from Beijing, even as Chinese military vessels conducted drills around Taiwan. NBC News' Ryan Nobles is the only television network correspondent traveling with a congressional group. He joins us from Taipei. Also with us, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, retired Admiral James Stavridis. Good, both of you. Good to have both of you here, gentlemen. I know, Ryan, you spoke exclusively with Chairman McCall after his meeting with the new president of Taiwan. What was his read on the visit and what are the major concerns? Well, there's a long list of concerns, Chris, that the Chairman McCall and the bipartisan delegation writ large has about China's looming threat here to Taiwan and this region in general. And Chairman McCall felt that it was very necessary to send a very strong signal to mainland China that the United States is not going to turn its back on Taiwan. It's going to continue to provide military aid. It's going to continue to provide resources and support to allow Taiwan to conduct itself as a self-governing island, but still adhering to that one China policy, which has been U.S. policy for decades, but at the same time making sure that China doesn't encroach on the freedoms that many Taiwanese people have come to love and appreciate. And part of that is this thriving technology economy that exists exists here on this island. Taiwan uh, produces 60% of the world's semiconductors and 90% of the most vital and important semiconductors. And Mike McCall was very clear that if an attack came from China, that industry could be crippled and with it, the world's economy. Take a listen. If China were to invade today and either own or break companies like TSMC, it would literally shut down everything. If you think COVID was a bad deal, uh, this would put us in a world of hurt. I think this is why the American people would see why defending Taiwan and this need and this hour of peril so important. And this was Chairman McCall making the case that it is a worthy investment of American taxpayer money uh, to provide the support to Taiwan as a level of deterrence against China. When you think about semiconductors, Chris, uh, they're in almost everything we use that has technology associated with it. It's your phone, it's your car, it could be your hair dryer or your uh, the uh, oven in your uh, kitchen. These are all a vital part of day to day lives. And if that industry were interrupted here in Taiwan, it could cripple the economy across the world. Uh, so that's part of the reason McCall believes it's so important for the United States to stand strong with Taiwan. Chris. Ryan Noble's great interview. Thank you for that. So, Admiral, let's look at these two sides that he just laid out. One is that uh, the U.S. is saying, look, our support is unwavering. On the other hand, you have a country that is holding the key to, as he just pointed out, just about every modern product we use. Is it clear who has the upper hand here? Uh, let's start by just saying good job to the Congress. Uh, bipartisan effort here, really heartening. And by the way, coming on the heels of uh, the Ukraine aid package, which passed overwhelmingly in both the House and the Senate. So our Congress can work together. And that's a good thing because here we come to your point. Um, this is a vital part of the global economy. You know, there are only 23 million people on this island of Taiwan. It's 100 miles off the coast of China. Yet by itself, it's roughly the 20th largest economy in the world, uh, as well as the manufacture of the high end chips that Ryan uh, eloquently described. So, yes, this is vital American interest. In my view, that means uh, making sure they have access to the high end military technology, providing a level of training to them not to attack China, that's an impossibility, but to create deterrence so China does not attack them. Well, let me t ask you about another piece of the puzzle because just hours before that congressional meeting, uh, Taiwan detected Chinese military activity around the island and of course, three days after the new president's inauguration, uh, China conducted its so-called punishment drills. So do you see this as just standard behavior by Beijing or something more worrying? I think this is, in fact, pretty standard behavior. And let's uh, go back to the last time we saw a really enormous spike in response to the visit of then Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. That was 
hundreds of ships and aircraft. That was ballistic missiles in the air, uh, a much bigger response. Um, this one feels to me a bit performative on the part of Beijing. They're not drawing a noose around the neck of the Taiwanese. They're simply saying, we don't like this new president. He should be careful how he postures his country. And I think um, all of that is worrisome, but I don't believe we're looking at a, a, a enormous spike. Last thought, Chris, uh, believe me, Beijing is watching what's happening in Ukraine. They're looking to how uh, the U.S. and our European allies have stood up to the Russians. Um, the more we send that signal about Taiwan, the, the less likely it is that China ups its game and tries to really strangle or attack this island economy. Let me go back to the breaking news at the top uh, that we talked about, which is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu with a rare admission that there was a tragic mistake in these airstrikes on Rafah. Yes, they may have killed, at least according to Israeli officials, two of the leaders of Hamas or two important members of Hamas. But it's estimated in fog of war, but 40 civilians may have died going to places where they were told to go, where they could be safe. How much does this complicate the situation for U.S. supporters of Israel? Um, quite clearly, it is um, an action that will be regarded as indefensible, in particular, Chris, because of the awful quality of the video that you're showing right now. We can all picture uh, women, small children, the elderly caught up in this as a tent camp uh, on Firming fire. To following death. This That's attack. right. Exactly. It, 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 it is going to reverberate around the world and continue to contribute to uh, protests. Um, the Arab street will be highly inflamed. And uh, even here in the United States, this will give great lift to the protesters. Bottom line, um, Israel has got to improve in not only collateral damage situations like this, avoiding them, but also getting the aid to these 2.2 million Gazans. That's still not happening smoothly. And uh, Israel, as the invading power, has the responsibility militarily to care for these populations. That video puts a dagger in the heart of that mission. We are out of time, but I have to ask you, in the fog of war, mistakes happen, tragic, horrible mistakes happen, but could this, should this have been avoided? It absolutely should have been avoided. And I think the prime minister's admission talks to that. Israel needs to continue to step up and take responsibility. That means accountability for whoever ordered these strikes and conducted them. Admiral James DeVritas, uh, our thanks to you and to all of those who you have served with over the many decades on this Memorial Day. Our thoughts are with the families of those who have lost their loved ones. Thank you so much.